Um, and so the ancestors believed in the that the spirits were all around us and in everything. And it was vilified when certain people came over to those lands, like the motherland. And then they started going through the isle, isles and the islands. Um, but we were called the first witches. Um, so the when you think about the King James Bible, and then they were, we were called witch doctors for stuff as simple as, let me look here because I got some notes about it. The reason we were called witches is because we practice uh, medicinal herbal uh, herbal medicine um, magic, or just work, and it's also called root work or uh, hoodoo, gemology and crystallology. That's why we talk about charging crystals in the moonlight. This is something of the ancestors, uh, which sometimes it was runes we were working with, um, and also bones, because the bones that of our ancestors we felt were sacred, the bones in their hair. Right, and um, I want to share a brief story about the hair aspect. And people, you know, they want to vilify us. I'm gonna come back to this in just a moment. I have I had locks at one point, and I grew them out for seven years to do spiritual work. This actually glows in the dark as a fabric. And um, when I was growing up, and my grandma used to do my hair, um, I had like all this hair all down my back. It was just thick and just every which way. And my mom would have a fit with my hair and you know just pulling it up. I just can't do this and my, my grandmother came over one day and she said don't touch her hair anymore I'll start doing her hair because you know this is very sacred you can't be over her hair cussing and frustrated like this so my grandmother started doing my hair and you know and she was always saying more hair more hair so um that's a creole thing and when she would finish more hair um so uh basically she would talk to me about how sacred hair was in the ceremonial aspect of hair and even doing hair. Um, so that's why she got my mom off my hair early um, because of the fact that it needs to be a ritual. So she taught me about the ritual. And one thing she taught me about was how sacred our hair was and to never let your hair get away. Now there is a, a, a old wives tale or some granny folklore I like to say that says that the reason why you don't want your hair to get away is because if a bird get a hold of it, y'all probably know this already. But if a bird get a hold of it, they'll make a nest out of it and then you'll be crazy the rest of your life. But um, <laughs> some of that might be true. But, um, but for the most part, you just want your hair because it was sacred. That's actually the practice of the ancestors as well as our bones are sacred. And that's why even in the King James Bible, you'll see. And this I have this. You probably can't see this. But you might have seen it in my other videos where I have this um, material that I use for ceremonial magic and things like that. And it has the sugar skulls on it. So they would, the ancestors would have these skulls and our bones and they believed in that and they would actually kind of paint them and make them pretty because they had these bones and they believed that the essence of their ancestors were in these bones and in the hair. So um, I don't want to show all of this but my locks are in here and I kept them. It's actually pretty big. This, this hair grew all the way down <laughs> my back. So it's like huge. It's really huge. So um, I was, you know, living the life of a Nazarene. I went to Georgia and I um, let my hair grow out. And uh, wow. So I use it in ceremonial magic for different reasons. Um, but one thing I realized is that I did start believing in the whole bird nest and all that kind of stuff. I started uh, saying that, you know, if I put a protection spell on it, it'll be fine. So, um, so I went to the sacred burial ground of my, my ancestors in Missouri, um, in uh, Haiti, uh, also known as early, uh, early um, Haiti. Okay, a lot of the those who were from the uh, Haitian Isles um, at that time when they were doing the French Haitian thing, and they were occupying Haiti, and then they brought us over to uh, Louisiana. And I went to, um, you know, the burial ground of my, my ancestors. And they are in Haiti, or Haiti, Missouri, or Missouri, right? So um, I took some of my hair and I clipped it. And I said I wanted my DNA to be there with my ancestors. And I'm like, okay, this is the ceremonial magic that I did. Um, the ones who are buried there is my uh, grandpa. Uh, he changed his name to Johnson from... Of course, it's Creole name. That was a requirement. That's a whole other day. That's a history. Well, we had to change our names. We couldn't use the hyphens anymore, things like that. So he chose Johnson. 
Eli, Elijah Johnson, or we call him Eli. And then my grandma, uh, Ada. Um, and then my aunties, my great aunties, and then uh, great uncles as well. And some other uh, relatives were at this particular sacred burial ground. So I take my hair and I do my, you know, ceremonial magic and I put it out into the, the grounds of this burial ground. Um, and, you know, didn't think of anything of it. And uh, before I left, all of a sudden, now y'all, hey, you can take it as you want, but there was this anonymous, I don't know where it came from, <laughs> I don't know, uh, deposit into my bank account. And I'm like, okay, what's going on with this? You know, didn't think nothing of it. Um, then, you know, before I left Missouri, and then I came back to Wisconsin, and when I came back, my hubby uh, said, oh, some branches, the lightning struck this tree by your car, and it fell by your car. So I'm going to show this picture. This is what happened to my car. So as soon as I saw that, I'm like, they heard me. My ancestors heard me. So I was like, wow. It was like amazing right at that time. So, uh, so back to the bones. Their bones are there. And of course, bones are everlasting. Bones and hair is everlasting. So uh, that's what our ancestors believed. And they were vilified for that. People coming over wondering what we're doing. Like looking and oh, they're doing this and vilifying it. So what are, they believed in the bones, uh, runes, uh, astrology, looking up at the stars and believing that they're governed by the stars. They were. Um, t there was also the divining and also the symbolism through um, through the tarot and or just really the hieroglyphs more so and that's where we see the symbolism and then also the animal sacrifices so if you look at the King James Bible it has a lot to do with the blood and animal sacrifices where does that come from where have you heard that from before well really all we were doing was we were actually um, um, eating our food and we were having ceremonial magic with the animal by you know connecting with it and then allowing it to lay down its life for us and then we would eat it at that point it was more of a ceremony and then there were things that were done with the blood um, for, you know different um, other rituals so that was being vilified so we were seen as savages uh, what they would call us a witch a witch doctor and just for those type of um, ceremonial type sacred ceremonial practices um, so this was uh, this was all about now. Now this is something where you might see it as malice, and I heard this this one time where there someone said that people rarely do things out of malice; they do things out of self-interest, which that's kind of someone's thought, but it kind of rung with me because if you have something where you're trying to govern someone, they can't be thinking that everything has God in it. They have to believe in one God, as the movies say, and one man, <laughs> one man saves the day. So. Um, when they came over and when they, meaning these pirate ships uh, for the ancestors, they had to change their thinking. Now they couldn't beat them with the with the might. Um, they tried hard. They really tried hard, but they couldn't beat them with might. So they had to actually use some other things. So they, what they did was they used the, uh, the actual um, um, governance that, they, that our ancestors found themselves under. So that's why they took a book and they told them that this book was, now who knows what the finesse is. I'm back to that again. It was some kind of finesse with it, the reason why we followed them like that. I really believe that. And I know that they say, oh, we were selling each other too. And that's, that's a part of it. But to get on a boat and go away somewhere, mm, you know, didn't know where you were going. It had to be some kind of finesse in it, is my take on it. Um, so, you know, hey, I'm going to go into, um, let me see, see if we'll talk about this book. Uh, Let's see here. Give me a second, because I, I need to go over some notes here. The Bible Project. So these, so the reason why I talked about that is because of the rituals that we had and how they were vilified, and we would start to be called witches. So we were the we were the witches, and I'm gonna tell you why I feel that this is true. The original uh, King James Bible. Uh, just a little history of it, and just brief history, is that uh, there were two different Bibles at the time when King James was uh, on the throne. Two different Bibles. One was called the Geneva Bible of 1560 and then the Bishop's Bible of uh, 1568. 
and um, there were it was confusion there and conflict because basically the the main point of the Geneva Bible was that it was you know it was anti-royal it was it was saying things like when a king was put on the throne the side the society was ran like a uh, as an, like an oppressor, they ran it like an oppressor, the society, and then it, there was a bishop's bible, which basically had Queen Elizabeth the first, her picture was on it, and it was more so, um, they, I think they were just saying it was boring, so they didn't want to use that one, so King James had to think of a way to get something out there to govern people's, uh, to, to work on controlling people's governance, what they believed in, so what he did was, um, he commissioned this bible project uh, in 1604, at that time, he was the King James I of England and the VI of Scotland. And um, with the project, um, you know, at that time, let's just sidebar, the, the body politics and religion were one and the same. In, in, in our country, there's a separation of church and state, but with the, at that time, it wasn't. In, um, so there was, they went hand in hand. Uh, there, basically, there was no separation of church and state. So it was all together. And uh, King James wanted to fill, fill this need of a new Bible. So what he did was he offered a translation and his version of the Bible. And uh, what it was is that he there was three points he wanted to make with this Bible. This is going to be interesting. One, it had to hold true to the vast number of original ancient texts. And I'm going to get to that in, in, in a moment. Um, the scrolls and the papyrus, all that kind of stuff. He wanted to, he wanted to keep it the same because he was making a pantheon. He was bringing all of these religions and spiritualities together in one book, and I'm gonna show you why he did it in a minute. Um, and he wanted to make it available. This particular new Bible he wanted to make it available to all the kingdoms under his charge, which was vast. Okay. And the last one is what he did, and this is. If I was on their side, I would be like, this is brilliant. You know, you can get what you need done now. Okay, because here's what he did. He wanted to show that the God, one God, now they changed it from the pantheon to one God. Even though the, the Bible is a, panth a pantheon, he wanted people to believe that there was only one God. And the, get this, that God was the king. He wanted to show the kingliness of God. Okay, so that was basically a strategic ploy. Right? So, um, and it was something that proved that had proved to be like what they're saying is so well, such a political tool that it was it was the best that anyone had dreamed of. And in essence, if you see four hundred years later, it's still going forward, what do you think? Okay. Although there's other governances with it. So basically, uh, he put together this pantheon and said it was only one God and God was a king. Okay, so now we have these people who are following the king, and oh, God is the king, and God has a crown, and he put everything in there together to work for his benefit, right? 400 years later, that's all I got to say. So now, here's what his mission statement was in the Bible, and I'm going to show a, a picture up here of uh, here where this was the original Bible, what it looked like. And on the front of it, did any of them people look like us? Are those any of the people of color? I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it nice. <laughs> so we uh, now this is his mission statement. We desire that the scripture may speak like itself, that it may be understood of the very vulgar. This is a real statement. Now, this if it's if it's a lie, it's in it's it's in what I researched. I'm just imagining how they talk. Oh, the very vulgar. We desire that the scripture may speak like itself, that it may be understood of the very vulgar. Okay, y'all, I'm through with that. <laughs> so this is what we have here. Uh, this is what we have, uh, a strategic manner which, which this particular king uh, was able to bring all these religions together. And I'm going to scroll across here all of the different, like 18 different ancient texts that were used uh, for this creation. So we'll get back to that another time. Um, and... And then we get to the, yeah, here it is. It starts with the Hebrew Bible, 500 B.C., so even before Christ. Uh, it didn't really get into the common, what we know as the common era, before Christ, until, oh yeah, A.D., the New Testament came out, right? So the other ones were the Old Testament, which is the Hebrew and the Septuagint, uh, which is, you know, a lot of magic in there. A lot of magic and a lot of that stuff that's prior to the A.D., which is um, after death of Christ, um, so, uh, let's see, before Christ, after death, 
and then you can see here um, I'm scrolling that's another day to talk about that so to wrap it up uh, just want to share that where we're going with this and then um, let's get into I'm gonna wrap this up now I want to get into the timeline so after we were seen our ancestors were seen as witch doctors and witches and the and of, of course you know who the very vulgar the vulgar you know how they say <laughs> over there in England I don't know that's fun to me but anyway uh, we were the ones seen as, as, as uh, the witches the witch doctors because of our ways you know that I mentioned and you know uh, having our bones of our ancestors in our hair and things like that and having these rituals and then looking at us in very dark melanated skin and all this all those type of things so um, brought the Bible over here now here's a timeline I'm going to show this and go over the timeline with you because you'll see once this timeline comes out you'll see why this was put in place so here we go um, here across the screen here have a look at the at the very top I have the limniscate is basically kind of representative of the uh, trade winds and I'm gonna show you the timeline that I'm kind of gonna get into the actual uh, what what that what it stood for what what happened to our people when we were brought over the ocean to the new land so as you look at it so 400 years slavery covenant expires Lionsgate 2019 and now that I'll get back into the finessing in just a moment. No, I'm going to go there now. The finessing was about, before I even go over the timeline, I say finesse. Some kind of way they were able to get our ancestors on a, sh on a ship. And I know the history of it, but I'm just saying um, to even make them think like this. Okay. Uh, and they called this particular ship, this pirate ship. I'm going to call it what it was, this pirate ship. The White Lion. So as you can see, they use the color white because that was a ceremonial color for us. And then the lion, because the lion was king, according to us, the king of the jungle, in essence, or whatever our word was for king. And then we have the king who is commissioning this, and God is king, and, you know, and so on and so forth. So I felt that that's the finagle. I feel that that's the finagle. And uh, with the timeline, here's what will happen. In 1604, King James commissioned new translation of the Bible, right? It goes into this whole pantheon. Uh, in 1604, at that same time, Shakespeare is in King James' service, right? Uh, just a sidebar on that, King James, uh, there's an a, a urban legend that uh, Shakespeare wrote the Bible. I have my Shakespearean theory. Uh, Shakespeare did not actually write quote unquote the Bible. He penned the Holy Bible. He penned it because he was the playwright of that time as history goes. So the Holy Bible was um, actually put together as a play. It was put together as an actual play. And and this is true. This is actually truth. Um, and what it, what is the play of? It was allowing a personages to uh, to the actual stars, the moons, the constellations, and what were considered the gods. So um, it was given this, this this flesh coat, if you can put it that way. And there's a playwright flow to it. That's why it's called scriptures. So um, you know, and then we'll get more into why how it's the angels and the demons and the spirits that actually were being played out in human form and being told as a story. So um, that's why Shakespeare was employed by uh, King James. That's how they kind of got together in the history that I found and the resources. Now, like, as you'll see, a lot of the other scriptures, they kind of start with a prologue and they end with epilogues, like a lot of plays do. And, um, and that's the flow, even in Genesis and Revelation. Uh, so you get that particular flow. And then as far as um, the timeline, so we kind of go back to it. After that, in 1611, King James Version of the Bible is published. And then in 1616, now get this, Shakespeare dies after having drinks with colleagues. Okay, so y'all, this, this is all about a big soapbox opera, soap opera. Um, so he dies after having drinks with colleagues. Okay, so who were his colleagues? He was employed by the king. He did all this work. 
at that point the Bible project was over okay so you you do the rest of the figuring with that and then in 1616 same year American colonies established at Jamestown Virginia by none other than the king and then of course 1619 the first enslaved uh, and we say slave I rather say enslaved the first enslaved and uh, the Africans come over on the pirate ship named the White Lion and so on and so forth and that was in Jamestown at the James River in Jamestown Virginia so needless to say there that is um, and I'm going to keep moving on so I'm going to leave it there so uh, I'm going to cut it off here but you know it, it's, it's a lot I gave a lot of information but um, there it is we talk about the transatlantic uh, trade routes it's also called the triangular trade was being uh, established it got its footing in that era in that time and I get back into the finagling so the pirate ship came over to uh, you know the trade routes and for the human car, uh, capital or cargo for free labor and um, you know changing the governance and so on and so forth so I'm gonna leave it with that uh, so I have a, a, a new thing I want to do with y'all give you some homework leaving uh, we want to say uh, riddle me this okay so riddle me this is what it is and um, when we get into it, it's going to be in Genesis. It's going to give you a little homework in Genesis. If you read Genesis 1, 1 through 5, I'm going to close it out with this. Genesis 1, 1 through 5. Let's see here. I had it up. Let's see here. I have this riddle me this. Um, one second. Genesis 1, 1 through 5, Bible Gateway. Here we go. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was out without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the faces of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning was the first day. Okay, so here's the riddle. Let's get into this riddle. So that happened uh, in verse 1 through 5. When you go to 15, and then God said, Let them be for lights in the, well, first 14, I'm sorry. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament and the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be the lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. So if we go from Genesis 1 through 5 and there was a light that was given. And then we get to 15 and we get the lights in the firmament. What were the first lights? So that's the real me this. So until next time, this is Bible Magic Raven. And um, hopefully... We can continue this lesson if you stay with me it's more to come definitely <laughs> but um uh it's been a pleasure thanks for coming by this evening so we'll talk more soon take care